Hey, so I just wanted to try something out. Bum. Uh, if I go bum. Bum. Oh, good. You can see all of my tests. You can see all of my test chat. That's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's, let's get rid of all that. Okay, that's much better. Hello, Internet. How are we doing today? It's your old buddy, me. Hi. Um, we're going to make some music. I've set myself a weird challenge today. We're going to use um, only arpeggiators. Well, that's to say that everything we are using, every thing we make has to go through an arpeggiator at some point in its signal chain um it, it's not a good idea it's just something i decided hey wouldn't it be fun if so that's the idea everything's going to go through an arpeggiator at some point so let's uh let's do that i don't know what kind of results hey let's get rid of that chat again looks ugly um i need those messages to not stick around for three years um, okay, so we can start off nice and easily. We can we can start off with an ar a synthy arpeggio type thing, or I think it might be interesting to try and do something percussive with an arpeggiator. Um, let's maybe start off with like a nice arpeggio pattern. So I'm just going to create like a little. Oh, I don't really need to do that, do I? Um, so we're just going to call this. Melodic arpeggio, I guess. Melodic arpeggio, okay. Or melodic synth. Um, so we are going to... I hate the default sounds on this. We'll do that, but we'll have quite a bit of glide on that. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll start off like that. Um, so we'll turn arpeggiator on. And maybe we'll go... Yeah, we'll keep it on 16th. But we'll do quite a lot of ties, I think. Um, so we'll have the first note off, in fact. I'll leave it on for the moment. We'll go an octave lower. And we'll go... I'm just going to turn some of these off just to see how it sounds kind of randomly. And we're just going to... We're going to try and create a little melody type thing here. It's just a trial and error, really. Uh, so that's quite nice. So we'll start again. We'll try and repeat that with like a slight variation. So if that's up to... Uh, if, if 18 is... Minus 6 and minus 12... be off and then five tied zero three minus two um and then i'm just gonna guess Thank mm -hmm. you. 
yeah. I don't love the end bit. Okay, we'll we'll keep it that way. I think we'll we'll keep that like that, um, and then we'll maybe That'll do. That's that's quite weird. Yeah, we'll we'll shove that in. We'll go F sharp. Why not? Oh, why have things reset themselves? I hate it. Um stuff down the line. So then I guess we do some kind of bass. Uh, if I just hold down... Yeah, that's going to be really annoying, isn't it? So then maybe the bass is just going to be like octaves and fifths or something. Um... We don't want a high pass for the bass, really, don't we? Or maybe... Uh... I know, low pass, definitely low pass. What am I doing? So let's try. Um, maybe... How does that sound? Because we could do the same... We could set it to 16th and then have every other note. So we have the option of doing uh, 16ths in between. Uh, so that could be minus, uh, we could go 5, 12. Um, maybe it needs to be minus, maybe it needs to be really weird. <laughs> it's a big guessing game.
I like that. It needs a little more. That's a bit better. Cool. Maybe a little, little more low end. So we've got those. Let's um, probably want to do some kind of percussion. So I'm going to try and use Retrolog now to do something percussive. I'm going to give it F sharp, just because I'm not really sure what else to do for the moment. Uh, but we're going to change that to mostly noise, I think, or entirely noise. So then the... I suppose the only problem there, there we go, um, you don't have any pitch control really, they're the same, so we're going to have to think of something else to arpeggiate, you know, um, because we could go... That kind of thing is kind of fun. But yeah, changing the pitch isn't going to affect anything. So we could have that there. That's fine. And then we could go... Uh, we could maybe do some other kind of control here. We'll go... Uh, oh yeah, of course, because it's all... Duh. It's in-betweens. So we'll send that to... I don't know, cut off. I kind of like that. Could always have the cutoff going through like a bit of an LFO as well. That could be fun. So we'll go uh, source LFO one uh, destination. Uh, LFO one is going to be tempo based. Sync mode uh, tempo. Yeah, we'll do. How long does that last? Maybe the, rather than the actual cutoff, maybe it should go to resonance instead. into that. Yeah, 
Okay, sort of don't want that in there. So with everything else, we have... So I think we need something really sort of firm in the lower end. Uh, so I'm just going to call that hi-hats, because I don't really know what else to call it. Um, oops, I didn't mean to delete it. I'm going to... It's not really cheating. Uh, I'm... <laughs> If you prefer something with it's not really cheating, you know it's probably cheating. I'm going to look for like a, a bass drum um, and we're going to work out then how to use that uh, kick drum. Cool. So if we go... I mean, that's technically running through a arpeggiator, right? I mean, it is, but... So if we go... Da, 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 da. Hey, party of 17. Dev. How do I say your name? <laughs> Dev. Dev. Spad Spadgus. Spadgus. It's Spadgus, isn't it? I don't know how to spell Spadgus. Anyway. Hello, Raiders. Nice to meet you. My name's Liam. We are making a piece of music in Cubase. The gimmick is we are only using arpeggiators. So en anything in the signal chain has to run through an arpeggiator at some point. Right now we have, uh, well, we've got a little silly melodic arpeggio at the top here. Um, so far we've used four instances of Retrolog, which comes with Cubase. That's running this silly little melody at the top. We've got a little bass line that actually I'm quite fond of. I might repurpose elsewhere. And we've got this stupid hi-hats thing and a kick drum. Now the kick drum, this is stupid because, like, we are technically going through an arpeggiator, but, like, who's to know, right? Obi Music, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out, buddy. Uh, thanks for giving us a follow there. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming along, guys. Um, I'd love to know uh, why you chose my humble channel to uh, to raid today. Uh, these streams happen twice a week. I'm a Steinberg certified trainer, so the company that makes Cubase have decided that I'm the kind of person they want propagating the message of Cubase, which is wild to me, but here we are. So normally, we are Mondays at 8pm UK time and Saturdays at 1pm UK time. I've got a family thing later today, so we're doing it a little bit earlier. Oh, OB Music just came at the right time. <laughs> ah, coincidence. Well, the raid's going to take credit for your being here and your following, so, like, don't want to start any beef or anything. Um, so we have four instances of Retrolog. I'm actually getting a little bit annoyed with that melodic synth because I've been listening to it for, like, ten minutes um, solid at this point. I want to try out something new. Um, this is something that sort of came up when I was, I was teaching Cubase the other day, and... Um, we stumbled across this thing that's that's really awesome that I've sort of, I, I've kind of thought about but not really put into practice. So we're going to give it a try now. Um, thank you. I I seem cool because I'm a big nerd. So thank you. That's cool. Yeah, there there aren't many people like producing music. There's a lot of DJs which I love, and a lot of really good DJs as well. But not many people just actually making music. Um, so yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to call this pad arpeggio. Pad arpeggio. I still can't spell arpeggio. What we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to come up with an arpeggio for a chord, like in the traditional way, root three, five, seven, whatever. Um, 
and then we're gonna we're going to now nah, producers are cooler than DJs. Don't tell anyone, but that's true. Um, we're going to have a really slow attack, really slow release, and no uh, no glide. It's going to be polyphonic, and we're probably going to stick a buttload of reverb on there as well. So even though we're playing an arpeggio, technically speaking, and that you'll be able to discern individual notes one at a time, they'll be going past so quickly that it's going to have the effect of a chord, right? Adam Neely did a video about like liminal space and music, and this is a similar kind of idea. We're sort of uh, in that fine line between the two. So we're going to start off by going real, real fast. We're going to do a 32, um, 30 second note arpeggio. So that kind of thing. I wish they'd kind of just initialize. That's the opposite of what I wanted. Is it not just an in it? There is not an in it. Okay. Um, okay, that's fine. We'll we'll stick there. Oh, actually, yeah, it's got octaves and ones. So we're going to go all the way open to thirty-two, and we're going to add some uh, lower octaves. We're going to add some fifths, which is seven semitones. Yeah. And we're going to add some minor twos and some uh, minor threes as well. Minor twos. <sighs> this whole semitone way of thinking really breaks my brain. Minus two is a minor seven. Plus seven is a fifth. I hate numbers. Uh, so we'll go for another fifth. We'll go for a third, which is five. And we'll go for some... I'm not, I'm not really worrying too much about uh, getting these in a specific order. I'm just kind of playing. There we go. Because like I say, like the speed with which this is going to go past, you're not going to really discern individual notes. You're just going to be like, get an overall impression of what the kind of chord is. Uh, we'll go for a plus five and a plus... Seven. Uh, we'll go for a minus two there. A seven here. That's quite cool. I like that. So oh, we don't need a mode, do we? There we go. So then, if we turn the attack up and the release. That's kind of cool. I... Oh, that's cool. From a programming perspective, that's really interesting because I... Obviously, coming at it from, from a musical perspective, I really struggle to find synths that... You get a lot of power out of synths once you know how to use them. That probably sounds like so obvious you don't need to say it out loud, but if you compare Retrolog to something like Massive, Massive has got a huge interface and windows within windows. It isn't obvious how it works at all, but something like Retrolog, which uh, OB Music, yeah, this is stock. Uh, Retrolog 2, I think some kind of version of Retrolog comes with any version of Cubase that you get, which is real nice. Um, and if it didn't, I'd probably buy something like this <laughs> if, I, if I needed to. Um, the thing I like about Retrolog is, is you read it left to right, and it makes a lot of sense how everything sort of patches in. And once you sort of know how any kind of synthesizer works, you can pretty much work out how Retrolog works. Um, and having the, the oscillators in one window, the step sequences and arpeggiators in the next, and then the effects which we'll come to in a minute, in the third window, is just perfect. It, it all makes an awful lot of sense. Um, chap I was teaching yesterday is a, a UI programmer, um, and in, he, he by trade, and he's, he's given Retrolog his blessing, which is, you know, <laughs> I think says it all. Um, so we're, we're kind of approaching that sort of liminal space. 
Oh, fair. Obi, what do you use? What's your uh, what's your thing of choice? And actually, now that I'm just going to turn this back on for the sake of the uh, the people catching us later. I've been having I've been having chat problems. <laughs> Just, I can't get. I keep changing my set. I don't keep changing my setup. I recently changed my setup in a big way, and since then I haven't been able to get the chat to behave. So now it appears to be behaving. I'm trusting you guys to make it worthwhile. FL Studio Twenty, cool. Yeah, I I started out on something that's quite similar to FL Studio. Um, at least last time I used FL Studio, it reminded me a lot of uh, Acoustica Mixcraft. Uh, yeah, there's a reason you haven't heard of it, probably. Um, Acoustica were, like... I think they made video editors and stuff. And they had, like, this Mixcraft program, which was mostly drag-and-drop samples. Which I really liked, and it, it was perfect for the sort of stuff I was into. When, when I started making music, it was like, yeah, you've never heard of it. Of course you haven't. Um, I don't know how I found it. Um, it's... It was great for me because I, I liked repurposing samples and I made a lot of music with like, um, I say music, I did a lot of stuff with uh, Futurama samples and like voice clips from Family Guy and then I realised that I could take my mobile phone which was like a chunky, one of them like old Nokia flip phone dealies, I could get my mates to yell obscene things into my phone and I could use that recording in my stupid music. Um, yeah. That's what I was into as a teenager. I was very cool. I was very cool. Uh, yes, so let's... I've added a little... Um, a little. I've added an oscillator on top of this. We're going to go sine wave and we're going to go an octave higher and have that a little quieter. Just to add a bit of higher information. And actually what we could do... How old am I? I am... Oh, I've been doing this a while. I am 33. And I, I filled time there for a second whilst I remembered. I'm 33. I started making music... Um, like, with, with computers when I was about 16, 17? Yeah. Yeah, so, like... That's maths I can't do, because I'm dumb. Um, I'm a musician, not a math musician. Um... Yeah, I, I started doing... Which is probably why you haven't heard of Acoustica Mixcraft, because uh, it's like 20 years old. Um, half my life. Half my... Yeah, okay. I hadn't really thought about it that way. I guess you're right. <laughs> that is half my life. Okay, well, I'm going to keep making uh, stuff with arpeggiators and try not to have a, um, a severe breakdown. <laughs> 19, dude, you're at your prime. You are at your prime. Enjoy your life. You're gonna you're gonna have great fun. Don't let anyone tell you that you're supposed to have your crap worked out in your twenties, because that is not true. Um so we've got this higher octave oscillator with the sine wave, which is a little gentler. It's kind of delicate, it's kinda of, feels like orchestral like um, a marimba or, or, or something oh no one ever works out what adult it is like I'm convinced that my parents were just blagging the entire time I kind of want to be able to crossfade between these two oscillators so what we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to go to the matrix here we're going to go to source we're going to find mod wheel we're going to add another instance of mod wheel this one is going to go oscillator one level. This one's going to go oscillator two level. So that when I use my mod wheel, which is my finger here, it should... Hang on. So that needs to be depth all the way up, depth all the way down. So... Okay, not quite. Why is it not quite? Do we need to have them halfway each? It's not quite. Um, do we need to do offset? No. 
Ah, okay. Do we need to do this? <laughs> That's the opposite of what I want. Uh, what about this? What if they're both all the way left? What am I trying to do? I am trying to essentially come up with a crossfader between these two oscillator levels. So in one instance we have only oscillator 1 and in the other instance we have only oscillator 2. Um, we've gotten close to it. But you can still sort of hear oscillator 1 there. So maybe that needs to be... You know, I, I also have decided I don't care that much. Or maybe, maybe there's another way to achieve that. I mean, there almost certainly is another way to achieve that. <laughs> it's just what that is. Uh, mod wheel is definitely the way to do that, because uh, then we have direct control of it here with the with the MIDI controller. Oscillator one level, oscillator two level, oscillator. You know that's right. So maybe. Hmm. So oscillator two, that's fine. That's what we want. So then... That's bad. That's bad. Oh, it sort of dips out in the middle there, doesn't it? That's very strange. Maybe they need to be all the way up. I don't know. There it is. I was thinking of that, but it's something that I kind of, um, rather than have it go through an LFO, I kind of want to have control of it so I can do it really slowly and bring it in and out, depending on different uh, sections of, of this track that we haven't written yet. Um, so at the moment, we just have a bunch of blocks of exactly the same thing. And this is the problem challenge this is the unique challenge when you're writing music electronically or based on some kind of ridiculous idea that you had at 3 a.m and you were like i'm gonna make it something with all the arpeggiators that's what i sound like when i'm asleep um we don't have any sense of structure we have um two weird things one cool thing and a sort of little bit of percussion there um we have no sense of structure so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna kick rather than bass. I'm going to put the kick drum over there. That's going to come in there for a bit and I'm going to color that orange. So that's the orange section. We're going to have this little pad arpeggio thing. That's going to come in there. Maybe the bass is going to join it here. The bass is going to carry on. The arpeggio is going to carry on for a bit. We're going to put the silly thing over there. Whatever that is. We're going to color that I don't know, it's green. Um, it's going to be orange. This is going to be yellow, because it's like orange. Um, and I'll talk about my, my colouring system in just a moment. Hi-hats perhaps should come in maybe there. Yeah. Um, I use colours to indicate sections in music, because that's how my brain works. Um, a lot of people will have the tracks different coloured. That makes sense as well. For example, I know that my face is in the way here. So perhaps, for example, you could have your drum kit parts pink. Um, you could have your melodic information blue. And you could have your bass uh, purple because it's halfway between pink and blue. I don't know. That's fine. That I'm not worried about this half of the screen really at all. Um, I mean, part of the reason my things look so organised is because I make music on stream quite a lot, so it needs to be kind of visual for people to be able to like follow and and learn. Um, that's the main reason, really. Um, so we have our mod wheel. Uh, if I go mod wheel, oh, okay. Uh, modulation, CC controller channel 1, there we go. Uh, oh, I'll go CC1. So, if we start down... 
yeah we want to sort of fade into that so i want to have this orange section with the lower octave the less pretty of the two and i want to slowly sort of bring it in so we're gonna do like an s curve here this sort of thing While we're waiting for this to fade in, there's a handful of you watching at the moment. I'm not going to lie, this is more viewers than I have most of the time. These streams happen twice a week. My goal is to teach music production through these live streams. If that sounds fun to you, give us a follow and come hang out uh, Monday, 8pm UK time, and then next Saturday, and then forever, forever. Drop us a follow. I promise it will basically be worth your while. If you have questions about music production or music business or guitar is my main instrument but i t spend most of my time producing and, and teaching thank you can't say your name cor corox corox sir i'm dyslexic and i can't talk um thanks for the follow buddy appreciate it um if you have questions about music production about cubase about guitar about signal chaining about music theory music composition i'm a big big nerd for all of that stuff or even if you have questions about live streaming or any any of the kind of hardware we're using you just bring them bring them along um it's going to be great we're going to have a good time we're going to learn how to make music it's going to be real silly uh french pronunciation oh Correct. That doesn't help me. I'm not French. <laughs> Can you spell it phonetically in the chat for me? That would help. Um, we're going to do a little bit more because we've got like a nice mod wheel thing going on here. Uh, the Taru's donut. See, that's that's something I can pronounce. Uh, yeah. Ink. The thing about being an English speecher, speecher, English speecher. The thing about being an English speecher is that we we don't get taught languages at school. We technically get taught like French or Spanish, but we don't value them in our school system. We don't really value our school system. If I'm honest, it, it's a miracle that I'm alive still. Um, but like, yeah, we we don't get taught why it's important to learn other languages because frankly it's a miracle most of us get to school in the first place english school system is a big mess man i left a job in education about a year ago because it was a terrible time and now i'm here um we've got the mod wheel set up i wonder if it's going to be possible to use the mod wheel to also add or remove some sort of ambient effects you know um, so let's have a little look. Um, I don't know if we can actually send this destination to... We've got buses. I don't know why we have buses inside of... Hmm. Um, perhaps what we could do, rather than using effects inside of... This is the sound of me trying to think out loud. I wonder if we could we could add a plugin, and then we could just tell it to also listen to the mod wheel. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's go. Um, delay ping pong ping pong delay is like my favorite delay. Uh, we'll go dotted eights because we're fun. Uh, we're going to go most of the way spatial. We're going to have a little bit of a filter there. Uh, can I? I do that. No, this is not going to work. That's not what I wanted at all. Um, mix automation track. Oh, you know what? We'll just we'll just fade it in. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Ob music is also a fluent English speecher. <laughs> Our language is an embarrassment, man. It's such a stupid hodgepodge, and we don't even teach it good. Funny, funny. That's really nice, actually. Oh, 
I like it a lot. That's fun. I'm a big fan. Uh, I am based in Cambridge. Cambridge, which is uh, by train about 40 minutes north of London. And um, it's it's so close to London that people think they can charge London prices for houses and Pepsi Max. I need both of those to live. Um, yeah, it's Cambridge is has this um like outside uh pe outsiders think cambridge is incredibly affluent and wealthy uh because we have a bunch of like prestigious world-renowned universities but like most of the people that actually live in cambridge are dirt poor <laughs> like we we see none of that money like none and like there aren't there aren't any available houses because um students from other parts of the country and other parts of the world their parents will just buy them a big old house to use when they're here and then they're like never here so there are no houses but there are also no people there's houses there's no available houses and there's no people yeah it's pretty bad i kind of want to move but like i'm a freelancer so i'm technically trapped it's great i'm smiling because it's incredibly disheartening <laughs> <laughs> um, that's our chord type thing so listening to that we had the bass in there didn't we and there was a problem can you hear what the problem is might be hard to, I'm not sure how like good the, the quality of the audio you're receiving is because um, both, both YouTube and Twitch do mangle it somewhat um so we basically we can't really hear the bass right so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look at the bass under a microscope and we're going to have also a look at the pad under a microscope now i've got um i've got a tiny bit of eq happening already on the pad up you can see here i'm just cutting out a little bit of low end that's just housekeeping because like that is going to get dirty basically we, we want more space for the bass so anything that's like um percussion that isn't a kick drum um synths that aren't basses anything electronic in fact anything that's playing harmonic or melodic information that isn't in that low area i just do like a high pass like a really low high pass just to get rid of some of that information so let's loop an area just going to keep it bass and pad for the moment um, so actually we can see our first problem is that this pad is incredibly loud so I'm going to go into the synth I'm just going to bring that down by three decibels That's helped our problem. But I think we can do a little bit more. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to do further housekeeping. We're going to do a 24. We're going to do an extreme cut there. To get rid of anything below this fundamental frequency. This is the lowest pitch that we hear. Anything lower than that we don't need because it's just noise, right? We're also going to look and see at what little peaks we have in the bass here so we've got one at 90 hertz we've got the fundamental here is 45 ish we've got 90 we've got a little one here at 183 i'm i'm reading this in the top corner here by the way or the bottom corner wherever this little box that keeps trying to escape my cursor is which you can't see because it's under the chat i'm good at this i'm really good at this so, uh, this little white box that keeps moving whenever my cursor tries to go near it, that's going to help us discern what uh, frequency is important. So this little mound here, the fundamental frequency of the bass is 47 hertz-ish. This next one is 92. We've got another one here at 185. And we've got a, a high one here, actually, at 544. Five, so... We've, we've got like one, two, three, 
I'm going to say four important peaks here, as opposed to the arpeggio, which has got just an ass load. An ass load is a common measurement. Um, an ass load. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to work out what frequencies are important to the bass. We're going to maybe boost them ever so slightly, but we're going to remove them from the pad. Okay, so this um, 45 hertz one, if I increase that a bit, ooh, that's, that's the feel it bass, you know? So I don't want to boost that too much, but it is really satisfying. Uh, I'm just going to do like a tiny cut behind it as well, so we don't get much lower than that. So 50 hertz. We actually have already cut off anything below 50 hertz. Um, Obi Music, you, you're welcome to come along anytime. Like I say, these streams happen twice a week. Bring questions, you know? Um, I, I spent eight years, actually no longer than that, spent eight years working in education, and then I've been teaching guitar and music production for like 12 years, oh, like half my life. Oh, this again. I like teaching. Ask me questions, it's all good. So we've dealt with that 46 hertz thing because there's nothing here, right? What's this next one? 100. Um, yeah, so we'll... I'll maybe just do a cut there rather than a boost. So I'll do a cut over here rather. So that is 91. Let's find 91. We don't even need to find 91. I'm just going to get uh, number two here. We're going to tell it, I'm going to type it in, and then we're just going to cut that already feels like it fits a little bit better. So we've basically cut out space for the base. It rhymes, that's fun. Um, oh, the bass is also quite loud. Oh, because we did a big boost there. Okay, so we'll, we'll bring that down by one. Okay. Um, what else we got? We've got this peak here, 182. So we're going to go 182. And we're going to do another bit of a cut there. And I also want to get this little peak here. Because that's where, like, the... Um, that's, like, a nice little sort of... I think that's coming up because of the distortion, but it's, like, a nice... It adds, like, a bit of brightness and high-end and shine that if we get rid of... It just sounds boring. So... I've got the tiniest peak on that, the tiniest little boost there. Um, I think I'm going to widen that out a little bit. Cool. Uh, so that is 512. So we're going to go here, we're going to go 512, and we're going to have... There we go. Uh, this is a bit loud still, so we're going to bring that down. Yeah, there we go. So if we... Oh, God, we spent so long working on just two tracks here. If we turn those frequencies um, off, if we turn those EQ plugins off, it's messy. It just fits a little bit more. It's like doing a jigsaw right, you know? So that feels really good, and, and now it feels very strange to have turned it off suddenly. So, we're going to keep that as is. Um, we've also got the hats and the kick here. So let's just have a little listen to this section as is. Having the... Um Having that delay fade in is really satisfying. I have an idea for the bass. 
Cool. Um, I want to start off with less bass. Let's try that. That's nice. So, we've had that F sharp for ages. Um, it might be nice to change the chord slightly, you know? So, if we go. So, the problem, not the problem, the challenge is that this pad is a minus seven. Yes. Um, so not not to get too into the weeds on music theory, um, but basically if we if we have a chord that is a minor seven, there's only if if we if we're sticking diatonically, if we're using the correct notes, the notes that are allowed to us, and we're not doing anything chromatic, um, we only have the root, the four, and the five chords to rely on because those are minor sevens if we're in a minor chord if we're in a minor scale so we have f sharp itself we have b and we have c sharp so we only have four chords when we're using this thing so that was go c sharp and then b see how that sounds Not a fan of that, but I do like the B. What if we just have like a B at the end of the phrase? Like that. Oh. Okay, so that A isn't technically allowed. Because if we've got an F sharp minor seven chord, if we went up to A, that would be some kind of major chord. But it sounds cool, so we're not going to worry about it. I like it, so it's staying. We're also going to change up the bass slightly when we get to about halfway. So it's going to be... That should go up to A as well, shouldn't it? Yeah. There we go, that's what I want. Um, uh, 
we're missing a little bit of something. I think we're missing snares. So I'm going to duplicate this kick. Snare. Um, we're going to find a snare preset. Cool. And we're also going to use up edgiator because we we have to um i i dabble but i'm not good at it you know um i i see the fun in it i'm using presets because i haven't had much luck in synthesizing drums in the past um so obviously this is a problem if we go to a an eighth phrase like this We're still obeying the rules. We're still using. We're still using uh, an arpeggiator, technically. Okay, that's cool. Let's change it up a bit. Um, I'm going to stick a. Ooh, not that much. Just to get a little bit of pitch information there. Quite like that. Yeah. Um, and now I'm just going to treat it as if it is just a snare drum, not a synth at all. So we're going to use a snare preset. Uh... That's quite nice. And we're going to just stick some reverb on that. I know that you can't see my plugins under my face. That's cool. That's cool. So then we're going to get into this next section, aren't we? With the silly arpeggio. So I just realized I call it the silly arpeggio when technically all of this is silly arpeggios. So I think that's weird. Um, So I think we need to disguise that a bit. Um, I, I want to do a couple of things. I want to change up the bass pattern. Maybe so it's just more aligned with the kick drum. If we do something like that, perhaps. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. I'm going to do that half as often by just gluing these pieces together. And then Control D. There we go. Um, the pad. I'm going to not go up to the A. We're going to do this, and we're also going to go back to like the original sort of higher up phrase. So I'm going to start that transition about here. Does that blend? Yeah. Because then, oh, that would 
should be uh, there. Yes. Maybe. Base needs to follow the arpeggio. Um, so we're just going to go bop, 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 like that. Nice, okay. Cool. That silly little uh, melody thing needs a bit more attention. Um, we're going to see if it's kind of intruding on what the bass is doing as well. Uh, so this is the bass. And as before, I'm just going to turn off chat for a moment so you can see. I need a button that does that. I need a quick command for that. Um, note to self. Um, okay, so we're going to do a dramatic cut at the bottom here. So that low end isn't really coming into it. That's not really factoring in, but I'm going to do like a bit more of a... Just cut out some of that information. Yeah. Um, so that 500k thing, we're just going to do a little bit of a... So maybe we can get away with raising that. So we can cut that away from here, in fact, if that's uh, 329, so let's call it 330. 330. So again, now we're making the bass uh, compensate for the, the melody. Everything lives together in, in harmony, pun intended. I'm just going to boost the high end as well because we can. Now we can get silly with effects. So I kind of want to do stereo delay. So what we're going to do is have a slower one in the left ear and quite a fast one in the right ear. I think that sort of thing. That's cool. Big fan of that. Maybe have like a little bit of a phaser or something in there. We have got access to effects in here. We lose a lot of information there, that's weird. Oh, because it's got cuts. Duh. Just like a little bit in there. I want it more aggressive now. So 
So let's add in some more oscillators. Yeah, there we go. So everything's very mono. Everything's straight down the middle at the moment. I'm going to take the hats. I'm going to shove them off to the side. And we're going to go uh, right 72. Pad arpeggio, we're going to put it slightly to the left um, until this melody comes in, at which point it's going to modulate. Uh, we're going to automate it quite far off to the side. Uh, standard panner. So then we're going to shove it over 72 ish left that's just to make space that's all that is don't know if you're listening it's stereo but i uh, i like that a lot uh, i'm also going to bring the volume down a tiny bit for that section uh, we were at minus four, now we're at minus eight-ish. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, nice. Uh, nifty. This hi-hat has got so much... Uh, so much additional information that it doesn't need. It's got way more noise than a hi-hat would reasonably have. So we're going to EQ it and, again, just pretend it's a hi-hat. Yeah, I... I've been doing this for a while, half my life, as we discovered earlier. So I am like, hoo, 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 hoo. I am all over the place. So if I'm doing something and you were like, what did you just do? Fine. It's all good. Um, we're going to find a hi-hat. Um, I have found that my one of my USPs, my like unique, unique selling positions as a, as a composer, as a producer, is that I work real fast. Like I can, <laughs> I can make like entire pieces of music. I mean, that's what these streams are. Like I go live for up to two hours and kind of have a finished piece of music or pretty close to at the end of it. So yeah, like that, that's how I'm trying to like stand out in the, uh, in the wide world of musicians. Um, that's a lot better. That's brighter as well. But what I'm going to try and do is look out for like natural peaks and try to like accentuate them. It's like a little one there as well. Actually, that's quite nice. Yeah. Maybe those need to be more diatonic, so maybe it needs to be C sharp B, just for an experiment. C sharp B, how does that sound? Maybe. Maybe at the end here, we need to vary the pattern up like this kind of thing. 
Yep, screw it, why not? Other way round? It's just trial and error, really, at this point. That'll do. Cool. So what do we do now? Let's maybe take that melody. We'll have like a little kind of emptier dropout kind of section. Um, da 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 da. So we're going to recolor that to blue. Um, and then maybe we bring this arpeggio back in its original form. If we go to show used automation, we can see how we achieve that. So this needs to come all the way up. Uh, actually, mm, let's do that gradually because we know that that sounds good, right? And then actually maybe we fade out here so our track is only like two minutes long, but at least that way we have completed a track in this time. Yeah. Um let's yeah. So then we're gonna we've brought it back to the center already. That's wonderful. Volume we can bring that back up to minus four. We can do that gradually over time, I suppose. We'll go minus four ish. There you go. That's fine. And then delay. We did have more delay. Um, I fit. No, wait. No, the delay was for that bit. So, what we'll do is. As that's fading back into the, the lighter version of the phrase, we'll increase delay um, significantly. Like that. Um, so, that's those bits. I'm then going to do something with the kick. Don't know what. Oh, right, bomb, bomb. That's perfect. Cool. So I'm going to copy that a whole bunch. I'm going to color that blue. Um, I'm keeping this orange because it's orange over there. Uh, I'm not going to have bass. I'm not going to have snare. Actually, we did have this lighter bass section, didn't we? Um, which I quite liked. So we'll shove that there. And we'll maybe remove that halfway through. Why has that taken... Interesting, weird. Um... I'm hearing something with kind of filters and stuff. 
um, a lot of my approach, um, I was on, I was on BBC Radio a, a couple of days ago talking about a film score I did, and, and one of the things we were talking about is my approach to, to composition for for existing media. So if someone hands me an, if I've made an advert, because I work in marketing now as freelancer, if I make an advert and I know I need to make music to it, and the advert already exists, or a friend of mine hands me a film and they want a score made, and it, and it's already that. I basically watch the thing pretending that it already has music and then trying to work out, okay, what is this music that I'm already hearing or that I'm pretending that I already hear? And that approach is kind of rubbed off a little bit on my on, on my streams here. And quite often I'll think, oh, I can hear this changing, even though it's not changing. But w what I mean when I say that is part of my brain is just telling me that that's the thing that needs to change. And that's one of the benefits of having done this for half my life um is that at a certain point your intuition just sort of takes over and a little bit of is is like audio muscle memory of like well every time you've done this kind of thing previously you've done this kind of thing and it sounded good so we're just going to humor that bit of my brain i am hearing like some more extreme kind of filter cutoff stuff here <laughs> Is it upwards? Is it more resonant? Maybe it's more resonant or more of an envelope. I'm just going to loop this bit because there's a bit more going on. I think it's a little bit of release as well. Cubase has this wonderful feature now where if you're using uh, a stock plugin of some kind, um, so something that comes packaged with Cubase, you can right click on any parameter, any button, any knob, and show automation track. And then it just pops up here and you can you can do all the automation stuff. Normally what you'd have to do is you'd have to click here, you'd have to go to more, you'd have to go, I will go to this thing and scroll down and find it. Can't do it. Too much time wasted. So I'm a big fan of that. So we've got that. Let's also have the cutoff. <laughs> So for this section, we're just going to increase all of those things. We're going to decrease um, release. That's resonance, my bad. Release is here. Cool. Cut off. So if we just let it play. Nice. it without um in fact actually let's get rid of that so the end is this instead that's nice i like it a lot um so 
Let's have a listen start to finish, and then we're just going to think if there's anything else we can add. Bear in mind anything else we have to we can excuse me. Bearing in mind anything else we're going to add has to have some sort of arpeggiator. Yeah. Right, well, there's a problem. That dips down too quickly. So I kind of want it to maybe fade in a little bit here. And actually, maybe we ditch the kick for a little bit. Um, kick and snare, maybe high hands too? I don't know. And bass. There we go. Maybe those do need to be the other way around. Or maybe just duplicated. Now, what I'm hearing, what I want to be hearing, is that at the very end, I think. So I'm going to cut. become famous yeah of course I do that's why I'm doing Cubase and not Minecraft right now obviously I want to be famous asking a musician if they want to be famous how dare you <laughs> ah good old spam where would it be without spam I think that's the pattern I want I'm not sure but I reckon That's a, although at least their username says lazy, so it's like, yeah, that's a lazy username, that checks out. They've got their whole brand worked out. Um, okay, I like this. I think it needs a little more interest and like maybe some, maybe some sweeps or, or like filter changes or something. Yeah, they got you, they won, buddy. <laughs> Obi versus the bots. Um, 
the thing I'm struggling with is... Can I add filter sweeps while still technically using an arpeggio? I suppose I, I could use the step performer. As far as I'm concerned, a step performer is kind of like an arpeggiator. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. If... If we decide that this track is done, that then we're 90 minutes into the stream, we're finished. This is the finished piece of music. If you believe that a step sequencer, ambient jazz, how's it going, my dude? Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Um, if we're saying that a step sequencer is not an arpeggiator, then the track is finished. And we're going to do something extracurricular now. I'm saying that a step sequencer is an arpeggiator. In which case the track is not finished. It only matters if you care about the meaning of words. I don't care about the meaning of words. I'm cool. So, we've got Pad Shop here. Pad Shop's got a step, a step sequencer built into it. Pad Shop is great. It's a granular synthesizer, which means it takes a sound... And it splits it up into like little grains of sand. Imagine having an audio file and exploding it into a million pieces. And then a granular synthesizer takes those individual little bits, those little grains, if you will, and it plays them back in a different order. Yeah. So um, we're going to try and use that. It's, it's great for making like soundscapes and weird abstract noises. I like using that as risers and, and hits and, and that kind of thing. So, if we find something kind of drony, so creepy apparently. Hmm. Nah, it's not enough information there. I need something a little noisier. So, if we go. Musical effects, maybe? That might work. Now we're talking. Okay. So we're going to use the step sequencer at a rate of sixteenths. We're going to make this kind of pattern. We also then need to assign that to something. I haven't decided what. Um, we're going to send that to... Oh, slope amount. My bad. I don't want any slope. Um, mm, 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 mm. we're going to assign that to cut off. Look at how easy that was. Feels a bit distorted. We're also going to, we're going to use an LFO here uh, to do something with um, something with the level. Oh, that's fourth. Okay. Yeah, I quite like that. So we're going to use that as a, a, a kind of effect riser um, to kind of signal transitions and stuff. Um, if, of course, you think that it counts as a, a arpeggiator, which I do. So uh, F sharp is the key we're in. We're going to do a two-bar rise. I'm going to do that for reasons that will become apparent in a bit. We're going to do a volume up, and we're going to do a very quick volume down, like so. Yeah. Uh, we could go longer than that. Yeah, let's do that for fun. Um, so it's going to be quite a long riser. That's fine. Uh, 
yeah, and then we drop down suddenly there uh, to infinity to turn it off, basically. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because we're going to take this um, little green line over here. This is the fader. So any effects that we have above this green line are then altered by the volume fader, which is this. Anything after is not. So if I put a reverb here, we're going to get reverb up to this point, and then we turn the track off, we lose the reverb. If I put reverb or delay or something here, that's going to carry on at this point, which is what I want. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to do reverb, we're going to use Roomworks, and we're going to set it to uh, a bit. Uh, I'm going to filter out some of the lows. That's quite nice. A little bit more, perhaps? A little bit... Yeah, let's try that. fun. How does that sound with everything else? Can we even hear it? Oh man, it's so subtle. I quite like it. Maybe we have that um, arpeggiator. Maybe we have that a little more extreme. Um... Just set that like that. Um, more resonance. Oh, that's gross, actually. So it's on band pass. Maybe if it's on... Maybe if instead of band pass, it was on high pass... That might be good. That might be what we want. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah? Maybe if it was 30 seconds. Oh, okay, right. What we're hearing, in fact, is mostly this, I guess. I don't know. Ah. I'm an idiot. Don't tell anyone I'm an idiot. There's two sections here. So we've got a B section here, too. So we can have this doing something slightly different if we wanted it to. Um, I'm just going to do, uh, I'm guessing, this is what it looks like when I guess. Um, so you've basically got two layers to patch up that, that work simultaneously. You've got the A level, the A layer, and the B layer. Uh, and you can crossfade between the two. So at the moment we're on B. Oh, that's not assigned to anything. Let's assign them there. I need to turn the... Ugh. We're so close to having something cool. Right, hang about. Okay, we can kind of hear that. Yeah, fine, whatever. We'll, we'll do mostly A. Cool, fine. Whatever. Don't care. <laughs> I like that. Um, 
so the reason I've, I've made this a bar longer than it needs to be is so that if I duplicate that, we get the the fader down as well, right? Because um, otherwise we wouldn't. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that here as well. And I'm going to give us another one here. And a final one at the very end. Halfway through the very end. Um, that was going to be quieter. This one's going to be slightly different there. And I'm just adding variety just so it's not identical every single time it happens, you know? Um, I mean, that one quieter as well. So, how does it sound? Can we hear it? We can. For this bit, in fact, it might be nicer to have like a longer tail. Um, because we've got that space there, so we can get away with it. I like that. So that was my main thing, is just, just having a bit more interest, something to kind of divide up the sections a little more, because we can't easily do drum fills here. Until now. Uh, I forgot what I was going to do. Um, I'm going to cheat again, because that, that's what I do. Uh, we are going to use a plugin on the snare. Uh, Ill-formed Glitch 2 VST. One of my favorite VSTs. Uh, does all kinds of buggy, weird stuff. Um, I'm going to use it to... Uh, do a big drum fill. <laughs> uh, let's have a little listen to snare. So it's there and there. Drum fill. Done, mate completed it so we're gonna use the mix function to bring in and out that snare drum which is silly but i quite like it uh so we're gonna go insert glitch to mix um Um, oh, hang on. That's we have an opportunity to do something slightly different, like that. That might be funny. So rather than the first one being a da 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 da, it might be like a da. Let's listen. Let's loop that bit for a second. I'll do. I'm going to do the same thing kind of here. Just have that, that little repeated note there. So that's a fun way to cheat the system and get drum fills when you technically can't really have drum fills. Um, I mean, maybe there's a way to... I don't know. Switch between from one phrase to the next I'll change the tempo scale oh I just changed the tempo scale whoopsie 
Oh, damn. You sort of can. That might be funny. <laughs> uh, let's go here. So this final, this kind of halfway bar here. If we change the tempo scale to 60, was it 16 and then 32s, what does that do? That's kind of cool. And I would never have thought of that. I'm a genius. We could maybe do that here as well. 16th change to 32. I'm a big fan of that, actually. Uh, that's the half... The halfway, halfway. Okay. Let's try that. Uh, let's have a little listen from here. There we go. That's fun. We cheated the system. Ooh, that was weird. What was that? Ah, triplets. We don't want triplets. We want actual 32s. Let's try that again. So, we can add a little bit more variety to that by maybe removing the hi-hats in those sections. Um, like so. Is that stretched across? Oh, it is. Let's do that. I just kept going. Um, so maybe actually what we could do is we could do, well, the same thing. <laughs> Let's do the same thing there to the, um, to the other thing. Uh, I'm really sorry, folks. I didn't see those comments come up on YouTube. Um, so to answer Jazz, dude. Hey. How's it going? Uh, Ginjep Studios asks, am I related to Corey Taylor from Slipplot? No. Nor Taylor Swift. Uh, or anyone else called Taylor. As far as I know, I'm in my particular line of Taylors, there's no one, uh, no one famous. <laughs> Even me. Um... So let's go over to the arpeggiator here. And we're going to change the tempo scale again. Because that was really fun. We're going to do for the hi-hats now. Um, so maybe if we in fact go... Oh, that's volume. That's not what I want at all. Uh, you can't also see what I'm doing. Haha. Uh, tempo scale. So we're going to do the same thing. We're perhaps going to go... Crap, what was it? 32s. Yeah. 30. Jeez. Uh, perhaps here we'll go slower. How does that sound? Yes. Very yes. I like that. Um, let's see if we can use that maybe here as well. Uh, so that was quarter that uh, was eighths which i'm a big fan of maybe here actually we go to fourths i like that i think that's going to be a little bit hidden in the mix there but I'm, I'm a big fan of all of that uh we could even go faster if we wanted to now nah, it's a bit garbled and weird Let's go eighths again. Uh, eh, eh. Yeah, maybe we'll do something with that in here as well. Um, so 38 eighths there, yeah. I like that. And we'll go sixteenths here. Yes, 
we'll go sixteenths there and then quarter. Yeah, that's kind of fun, actually. I'm, I'm into that. I will remember that next time I do uh, anything in my life, in fact. Let's do that same thing. We'll listen from the start, and we'll just see if anything springs to mind as being uh, good and repeatable or just kind of bad. Hopefully nothing's just kind of bad. Okay, there is like a little bit of stuff going on. So uh, we we haven't really done any leveling. So I'm just going to shove in a compressor. Uh, vintage compressor is my fave. Um, drum kick. I don't really have a setting for. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll use just the standard compressor. I'm just going to squash it a bit. Cool. We haven't done any master chain leveling, so actually I'm going to throw a little bit on there now. Uh, we're going to go to the master fader. We are going to go... Um, I'm just going to add some stuff and then we'll go through one at a time. Magneto 2, which is a distortion. You'll see why in a second. Um, Maximizer, which is a kind of limiter, sort of. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Frequency. I'm actually going to swap those. Yeah. And lastly, Imager. Um, so... I'm just going to loop a section. I'll just play it from there. So, Magneto is just going to add a bit of shine. So we're going to go master more air. You can see we're peaking a bit. Uh, so I'm just going to bring that down a bit here. That's a bit better. Frequency, we're going to go master, D mudder. That sounds a lot better, actually. Maximizer, again, we're going to look for a master preset. Master dynamics, but dynamics are cool. We're going to turn it down a little bit. An imager is a stereo effect, a stereo enhancer. Uh, I'm just going to turn the width down to zero for the lowest frequency, anything lower than 100 hertz. Uh, okay, so that's better. That's a lot better. Um, what's our, like... I'm going to do a little bit of um, automation here. We're just going to automate the mix of the maximizer um, because I want this green section to really pump and I want everything else to be kind of calmer by comparison. So we're going to automate this down to about 30, 20%, something like that. And we're going to do that kind of fader to it. Wonderful. Um, down here, this orange section is going to be about 59%, and we're going to curve into it there. And then 
below here we're going to be low down 30 again so basically that's just going to control our overall um compression i guess we, we've got a limiter but we're not using it ramped the entire way so um this is kind of this green bit is the most compressed section we're going to have the rest of it is kind of a little gentler and the intro and outro is kind of fading in and out to kind of control the overall dynamic make it feel more like a song more like a performance let's start again and see what we got That's quite nice. I, I'm a big fan of that. Um, the the lead synth comes in quite aggressively. That's not the end of the world. Folks, I'm going to set up a little raid, as there's a handful of you here. None of my favourite streamers are online currently. I think because I follow a lot of people that are uh, performing in Edinburgh. So they're, they're all off doing cool stuff. Um, we're going to take a punt on this dude, Paul Entertainer. It looks like he's playing guitar. It looks like he's got about 30 people watching, so we're going to give that a little nudge. Um, thank you so much for hanging out. If you're new, um, it would be rad if you um, gave us... Oh, that's my voice from earlier. It would be rad if you gave us a, a follow, if you're watching on Twitch, or a subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Um, I go live twice a week. I do music stuff, um, and I answer questions. Uh, Bobby was a bye boy. Hey, how's it going? You've uh, you've you've followed just in time for us to leave. Oh, you're probably one of the people watching. Sorry, I'm being really dumb today. I'm not normally dumb. I'm sometimes dumb. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I'll be back Monday, 8 p.m. UK time, um, and then 1 p.m. Saturday next week, which is the usual stream time. Although, if more of you are around earlier in the day, let me know, and I might be able to adjust that. Um, LT guitarist on all the platforms. You can send me money, Kofi. You can commission a new work from me as well through Kofi. Uh, I spend most of my time on Twitter. I also do hang out on Instagram. I don't really, don't really do Facebook. Facebook's dead, isn't it? Um, I need to go before I slag off all the digital platforms. Thanks and bye. I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> um. You can through Kofi. Bobby was a bye boy. That's how I do. That's how I do feedback. I don't really do live feedback. It's not really what this channel's for. Maybe one day. I don't know. But in reality, probably not. Anyway, bye.